Hey, everybody. This is Scott with the Witness Underground documentary. We are live on Kickstarter right now for through the for one more week. It uh, ends on November 17th today. So please go support the project. If you're following the Witness Underground project, and I know you are because you found this video, go to the campaign. It's at witnessunderground.com. Today we have with us Jonam Ross from the UK, and he is offering something very special for our Kickstarter campaign to encourage people to get involved, but also to get access to something really important. So today we're going to talk about what that is. And I've started using it, and I love it. So hi, Jonam. How are you? Scott, I'm great. It's always a pleasure, and I'm uh, happy to be here. So thanks for having me. Absolutely. Same on this side. Uh, I'm very happy that we've met and started connecting this year. Um, you're a very interesting person with an incredibly interesting um, project that I think is incredibly valuable to to myself, but also to others who have a shared background like us um, as yeah. former witnesses. And it wouldn't necessarily need to be a former witness, but like anyone who has come from a difficult situation or wants to improve their mastery over themselves. Could I say that? Yeah. Absolutely. Probably um, using a little bit of the language you've, I've read, I've gathered from you <laughs> in there. It's contagious, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> what a writer yeah. you are. It's, well, well it's, it's so important. And, and what, what you're doing as well, I think what I enjoy most about it is there's this instant, like, as soon as I watch the doc documentary, you know, when there's just this like instant, like captivating, like time disappears and it's like you, you just get totally into it. And yeah. uh, and when you, it's not very often when you just feel that sense of fascination with something, mm -hmm. and when it happens, I'm like, this is awesome. And then seeing, especially music's close to my heart too, and so seeing how it, it uh, you know, helps people to make that that journey out, and the the things that you highlighted that were um, different to what's being highlighted, highlight highlighted everywhere else. Yeah. Um, is um, just like, yeah, any, any chance to promote this and get this out there, it's going to help a lot more people. Like the more people see it, the more people get helped by it. So it's awesome. Yeah. Thank you. I, I feel the same way uh, about my project, but also about your project. Um, yeah. what could you give a brief, um, well, first of all, maybe why do you, why do you want to be a part of, I guess you kind of did, but what is it about the Kickstarter that you think is exciting since we're on the, since the intro before we yeah, get into your I, project? I think that the um, beyond what I've already said, the the Kickstarter it, it helps to highlight things that that are not spoken about so often. Whether it's in other cult documentaries, where like you mentioned somewhere, it's like there's it all follows a kind of similar path, and it's important stuff and raises awareness and all of that. But there's there's not much of a next step. It's just like oh, we're all you know we're all kind of scuppered then. Whereas there's a there's an aspirational side to what what you're sharing, which is that you know there is a there is a way forward, and it's not just a case of being um, sort of crippled mentally or emotionally for life after you leave. There is the, these can be experiences that maybe hurt us, and that maybe we have to process in different ways. But you can actually move forward and and uh, build a life that you find meaningful. And to me, that that was the undercurrent that was taken away from it that that I took away from it. And a lot of um, activism and stuff that's out there is very focused on kind of playing reruns of the past and uh, and just kind of staying stuck in a way. And and that's that's not what I'm about, and that's not what your project is about either. So it's it's yeah. about how can we honor the past, sure, deal with it, and not sweep things under the rug, but mm. we also you, you use the phrase of, of uh, mastery or self mastery. And yeah, we, we grew up or we had our experiences in that group and those were our masters. We were literally using the metaphors and the language of master and slave, obedient, submissive, sheep-like ones. Mm -hmm. And uh, so you leave an environment like that and there's, there's a power vacuum. And so those aren't your masters anymore, but that, that vacuum is there. And so either it's going to get filled with other people and other groups or ideologies or whichever, uh, or you can develop some self mastery and, and fill that vacuum for yourself and yeah. uh, get into the steering, you know, the, the driver's seat of your own life. I love that. I would like to share a, a 
personal story using that that language and metaphor about the power vacuum. But I think we can launch right there into your project. What is it that you offer to people? Yeah, so I'm a hypnotherapist. And after I left the religion and woke up from it, most specifically, which came later, uh, I noticed that there are a huge number of people who really struggle with things like you know, triggers, feeling emotionally weighed down, feeling um, socially withdrawn or cut off, feeling that anticipation of being shunned and rejected. And it's it just it can create this cascade of effects throughout our lives. And all of those things are solvable problems. And uh, from my training, my experience with hypnotherapy and other things like NLP and behavioral profiling, interrogation, et cetera, et cetera, I, I know how to solve these things. And once you know how, it's it's not complicated, but we just don't get taught how, either in mainstream schooling, definitely not within the religion, because it was in their interest to keep us dependent and to keep us small and to have us set up psychologically so that if we do leave, life on the outside is so difficult that it would just be easier to go back into the fold. So all of that's by design. Um, so a few years ago, I started wow. putting resources together and and trying to, to just, just equip people to actually f- forge a path out mentally, emotionally, and to, to not be weighed down by these things from the past. And the really common belief that a lot of people have when they leave a cult or any kind of oppressive group is that, oh, the the cult needs destroying, it needs taking down, it needs getting rid of. And so we, you know, try, try and do all, all these things to get rid of it. And, and that's understandable. And yet, if we were to wave a magic wand and the organization were just to disappear overnight, uh, all of our problems would still remain. The um, fear of being shunned, the uh, belief that we're unworthy of kindness, the b- beliefs of being fundamentally defective and sinful, and well, all of these um, these kind of subliminal beliefs that got in, in ba- baked into us, mm. they would remain even if the cult didn't. And so the the, the real focus of, of where I try to focus is, well, what's that part inside of us, that internalized cult member? that stays with us even even if the cult were to disappear um because that's how mind control works on on a societal level if you think of these uh you know the societies where they have or had thought police or um, you know secret police and nazi germany or communist russia and all of this you don't have the manpower to put a soldier with a machine gun in every house what you had to do was internalize the control mechanisms into each individual so that the the uh, community became self-policing and so authoritarian groups and religions do the exact same thing we become our own captors and so when you get out you need to re retrain and uh, uh, reprogram that part of yourself otherwise it will just find new ways to sabotage you and act out those uh, those patterns even long after you've stopped believing the overt doctrines of it. Mm. So that, that was kind of the the underpinning fascination. And it was for self-defense or self-preservation firstly, because I had to go through this deconstruction and reconstruction process myself. Mm. Um, but also I, I did feel a sense of responsibility, really, because I, I've been lucky enough to have the training and the network and the exposure that I've had that's that's helped me to bridge those gaps a lot quicker and so kind of p- passing that back along and sharing some of the the things that I've found useful and that my clients find useful it um you know it's, it's very meaningful and to, to see people go from having problems that they thought might be a life sentence to having it disappearing into the rearview mirror that's you know that's really satisfying yeah. Yeah, it's a crazy goal to have to topple a global religious empire with an entire um well with billions of dollars and a legal team that yeah. can operate at the supreme court of every country on the planet and they do. Um toppling that is a lot harder goal than to change the way your mind works. Yeah. And the effects can I can imagine are far reaching in how it can better your life. It's yeah. 
one thing I was going to share before that this brought up for me is I used to say after, cause like in the religion, you can't really go to school and there's sort of a different way to find education or a career. And I kind of found this path that was, well, if you just go straight to the owner of a company doing something that you want to do or want to learn, you can get a fast track to the education from someone who's not only doing a great job at it, they've got mastery of that skill or topic, but they have, um, also know how to run the business of it. So they can teach you both simultaneously. Whereas if you go to university, you're five years in and you don't know anything about business at the yep. end, you just know about some of the tools you learn about how to open and navigate some of the tools. Um, and maybe you have the key concepts to how the thing works in physics or something, but you start out with almost no skills. And, um, so going to the person who knows and getting that education was like, Oh, you can get paid to learn. And you fast track it in a year or two, you have a mastery and you can run the business of it. But you might be your 10 years ahead of the, the average person who goes to university path. That's cool. But I used to call it choose your own masters nice. and using that language is almost like, oh, maybe, I mean, that's not a, that's not like a, a fun way to say, like, I'm choosing where I want to put my attention and, and where I want to get my education. But it's also using that same language of master and slave that we were um, taught. And that was the first thing that came to mind when you said it. Yeah. Maybe on a positive swing, but yeah. <laughs> well, I think uh, we certainly had a, a negative experience of that language. But if you if you think back to the arts of, mm -hmm. uh, you know, say the you know Renaissance Europe or something, you would have the, um, you know, the, 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 the master, a journeyman and an apprentice. Yeah. That's kind and, of more the model I was thinking of. Yeah. yeah that and uh, yeah, it's, it's not a slave master. It's, it's the maestro, you know, it's, it's someone who's, getting the results that you want and mm -hmm. so well you can try and reinvent the wheel yourself and uh, fly solo and, and just take forever to make all these mistakes that other people have made or you can go and learn from the people who've made the mistakes and figured it out for you and then you can put your own spin on it mm -hmm. and that's and, and that's how every intelligent person goes about learning things mm -hmm. um there's there's room for innovation and creativity and all of that, but if you're trying to solve a problem, like step one is really find someone else who's solved that problem before, and you'll probably get some useful tips from them. Yeah. Also, I like that just brought up something. Asking people for something, usually people ignore it or dismiss you or it's spam. But if you ask someone advice, you can like mm -hmm. instantly have them on your team. And this is sort of like the, oh, go ask the person who knows everything for advice on how to do the thing that you want, that they know how to do. Um, yeah. They'll probably become come on your team or like give you mentorship. Yeah. Like let, let, yeah. Sorry, go ahead. Oh, that's all a big aside, but um, I would like well, to know. Well, the fact is most people who are um, at some position of, of status or they've you know, achieved anything, there, there's some part of them that wants to nurture younger versions of themselves. Mm. Like you go to a CEO or whoever, you know, someone who might seem to be quite unreachable. I, I have this weird uh, track record of connecting with you know, authors and experts in this, that, and the other. And it's not because I'm a celebrity or, or anything like that. It's just reaching out, making a, a human connection. And when, when people can see younger versions of themselves in you and that, that same sort of aspirational spirit which says no i'm not going to give up i'm going to figure things out and i have life to live and things to do and a difference to make and ha having the chance ju just like you and whoever's watching this if, if you had the chance to speak to a younger version of yourself either literally yourself like your doctor who and can go back and in, in time or just someone who's in the same position you were and if you could share something that would shave like five years off their learning curve then you would and you'd feel great about it. So, um, so yeah, there, I think there is a fundamental um, life-affirming generosity that's in the human spirit, which is really, um, it's, it's one of the special things about us. I love that. You mentioned something earlier that I really liked about how you, you kind of are reaching back into your past or the past community that we both are a part of, even though we're in different countries and different, somewhat different cultures. Mm -hmm. Um, the Jehovah's Witness experience and people who have, who are in it or have left um, offering something to, I like the idea, the concept, I think you even said it, like shorten the time it takes to 
to that would normally take someone to process trauma and heal. And some people never do. They live mm-hmm. in with these mental frameworks that you described until they die. And that's not great. It's mm-hmm. not a great option, but if we can give them framework to like help them get to a place of, uh, contentment maybe would be like a, a, a decent goal. Mm-hmm. Um, in the present moment or even better an excitement for their own future, no matter where they're at in the journey. I met a lot of people who are like middle-aged and leaving the religion. And like, now I'm, I just had a kid and I just left the religion and my whole world's great. Like what am I, I missed out. Like, what do I do now? And um, it's been interesting to hear a lot of those similar ideas from people. Um, and I want, I want to kind of show people with my film that like, no, you can actually your second chapter, your third chapter of life can be, um, can be great and you mm-hmm. can accomplish so many goals. Let's, let's help you fast track. And I think hopefully my film can have some effect of helping people to get the help they need process mm-hmm. the trauma, but your work is, it mine's more like a table of contents. Hey, there's some, there's some things you can do out there. Like here's some people who've done it. Maybe try making art. And you're like, no, let's, uh, let's go into the internal world. Here are the exact tools. Um, <laughs> Uh, you, you mentioned a number of things that you can um, change the frameworks of, of master slave, for example, which we talked, you touched on and a few other things. Could you kind of walk through, walk me or walk the audience through like how it works to change yeah. one of those things? So I'll, I'll kind of give the, give the overview. So the, the way out of a cult and I include being out mentally and emotionally as well. Uh, the way out matches the way in. Uh, so you look at how cult recruiters work, and there's very much the, uh, we call it the piecemeal wedge method or the uh, boiling the frog metaphor, which is horrible, but it's famous enough to refer to. And uh, so it's piecemeal wedge a few steps at a time. And... Um, it specifically works in these four areas. My friend Chase uses what he calls the fate model, which is focus, authority, which we already spoke about, tribe and emotion. If you can determine those things for a person, then you can uh, gain a high level of influence over them. That's what the cults do. They, uh, they capture more of your focus. They position themselves as authority figures to you. Uh, they build a sense of tribe around you. Humans are tribal animals. And they uh, they get locked into your emotional framework as well through uh, punishment and rewards. So that's what they did. They built that, um, that they infiltrated those areas of your life. They also infiltrated another important five areas, which is your environment, your uh, time, your appearance, your social life, which matches tribe, and also your finances, either by limiting earning potential or tithing, things like that. So these uh, groups or uh, individuals, they infiltrate those areas of your life slowly and gradually until they have complete domination over it. So the path out of that is is to, to do the same thing, but for yourself is taking stock of the ways that they have uh, that that these external forces which you don't authorize to have dominion over you anymore uh, the way that they had done that and then you you start to claim it back piece by piece um in terms of behavioral change that's a a, a standard kind of approach of just uh, identifying it working on it and doing uh, doing what you can, voluntarily facing problems and and trying to solve them intentionally, and that works. Um, it's kind of a um, blunt implement as an approach, but it, it definitely works, and that's the way to do it. Where can I give a, a, sorry, can I give a break and like talk about a couple of those things? Yes. Um, so they limit education. So one solution would be to go get an education. They limit your access to finances in a sense through the limit on education. So once you have an education, now you can make more money and you're no longer dependent on the community for survival. You can now pay for your own way, let's say. Would that be like a that, practical, simple example? Yeah, that that's an example. On on that specific example of education, I would just since since we're mentioning it, 
that there's a belief lurking within the community that if we didn't go to college or university that we can't do well mm -hmm. and and so if we even want to get started it's like the runway is trying to find a college or university to get an education and then in like five years time maybe you'll make some money and um you know as an entrepreneur <laughs> yourself scott it's uh it doesn't have to be that way um uh, if right. uh, so I, I would be very focused first on what you want and there's so much stuff out there in in terms of goal setting and and all of these things mm -hmm. what they miss is that uh, so many of these things that you'll you'll find online it's like dream big what's your vision for the future and all of this and then reverse engineer that and that's not wrong uh, but again it's incomplete because if you're uh, metaphorically standing in front of this big kind of mountain well your your vision is obscured by that mountain you mm -hmm. you need to get up on it in order to gain a vantage point which will help you see the future so a lot of mm -hmm. people leaving a religion or cult they uh, they feel overwhelmed and there are these immediate problems like how do i uh, find a place to live or how do i you know, just get the basic base levels of Maslow's pyramid, you know, the hierarchy of needs. Mm -hmm. How do I get that taken care of? How do I have uh, some kind of security in my relationships? How do I have some uh, emotional peace and closure after suddenly getting shunned by the hundred or so people who were my close knit friend and family circle for the past 30 or 40 years? You know, yeah. those are those are an immediate event horizon that if you don't know how to solve it, then imagining anything beyond it, some kind of visionary inspiring purpose for the future, uh, mm -hmm. that's difficult for most people. And so when they do those goal setting exercises, it, it can be easy to get discouraged because it's, well, I'm, I'm struggling to find this visionary inspiring thing cause for the future because I can't imagine living without this pain right now because I don't know how to get rid of it. So shortening the time frame to say well what's the next vantage point that i need to get to is uh really helpful and uh pairing that with the idea of outcomes like your outcome most likely isn't to get a college degree it's to be able to make enough money to provide for your family or yourself or, or whoever you know so so it's thinking about what we actually want to have happen and then uh then reverse engineering that I think it was Nietzsche who had a quote about how uh, many are stubborn in their pursuit of the path and uh, few in pursuit of the goal. And so when, when we start with the end in mind, even if the only uh, thing that we can imagine is just getting to the vantage point of just being at a kind of neutral place of not being in emotional and mental torment, uh, that's that's a significant goal and that's worth aiming at. And, you know, you can get inspired about what comes next once you're at the top of that mountain. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you for breaking that down. Maybe that was a, a poor example for me to, to bring out. Cause like everyone has troubles with one. education and money. Yeah. It's an important yeah. one though. Mm. Cause it's so you're common. about to, you're about to get into how the hypnotherapy works. I, mm. I imagined, or I think I heard you start to say, um, so yes, yeah. continue. Yeah, so the, the thing that makes hypnotherapy especially helpful is that it helps you to reach the level of your own unconscious mind. The thing, and we could talk for hours about that, but just the cliff notes are that your, your mind doesn't care what you want, uh, but it cares immensely about what you practice. So things that we repeat again and again and again, your mind will automate for you, like tying your shoelaces or learning how to tell the time or how to spell and write and all, all of these things that we completely take for granted. At first it was difficult. We did it a bunch of times and then it's still you doing it, but you don't have to consciously think about it. That's because it's taken care of by your unconscious mind. It's become an automatic behavior. Hmm. That's true of internal behaviors like thoughts, like internal dialogues, like belief systems and relating styles. And so if we spent decades of our life practicing these things again and again, feeling unworthy, talking badly about ourselves or to ourselves, all of the things are really common for ex-witnesses and ex-cult members, uh, then 
even after you've stopped and believing the doctrines and proving them wrong, that uh, uh, momentum, that those neural pathways have been just through brute force repetition, they've been built. So mm -hmm. hypnotherapy is especially helpful because it helps you to get straight to that subconscious level and reprogram things there to, to make changes at a deeper level so that then in, instead of it being like you're trying to fight against yourself, you're just redirecting the river. I, I, I say that. The, the metaphor that I often use is that your conscious mind, which is the bit you're aware of and the bit that you're conscious with, um, obviously, that's like the swimmer in a river. And your unconscious mind, which is everything else, that's like the river itself. So how a lot of coaching and therapy programs try to work is by strengthening the swimmer to make it you know, stronger, better, harder, faster, whatever the Daft Punk song is. And uh, that's all fine. But if the river's a raging torrent and it's pushing against you, that's going to still going to be really hard work. What hypnotherapy helps you to do is to retrain or redirect the river so that then it can start carrying you in the direction that you want to go. Uh, so as soon as I discovered it as a as a way of helping to change patterns, it was just the the results, the speed of change, and the depth and the lasting change that you can create is super helpful. And and it's it shocks people how um, j just how easy it can be. It's not effortless, but compared to struggling for months or years at a time, it's a uh, it's a totally different experience. There's something that I learned, maybe you can speak to this, um, this year especially, but also the last few years as I've been doing more therapy and, and self-help stuff. Um, there's this concept of, of what you say out loud is an indicator of what's going on internally. Mm -hmm. And um, I've had a, a good friend, especially this summer, she, was, she called me out a bunch of times on negative things I was saying and, and like noticing a pattern, even if I only happened like once before and then it happened again she's like hey that's a thing that you're doing it's mm. not helpful so it's, like, it's like she's like i don't care you need to not do that because it's not healthy for your mind or your subconscious world mm. um, could you speak to how the power of of thought and speech affect this subconscious river as you described it yeah um there's a, a Carl Jung quote that I refer to a lot where he says that until you make the subconscious conscious, it will rule your mind and it will rule your life and you will call it fate. And, uh, and it's so true. When we, um, and the, the words we say are definite indicators of the, uh, you know, the, they're, they're the tip of the iceberg and they're the indicators of what's beneath it. Um, the like ne negative self talk. So how how a, lo a lot of people approach the um, the way to change that is this brute force repetition of affirmations. It's like what what am I saying? Um, I'm worthless. Just to give an example, what's the opposite of that? You know, I am worthy and loved, or some something like that. And so force yourself to say that, and you say you know look in the mirror. You do do this kind of thing again and again, and that's that's perfectly valid but again it's a it's a brute force repetition exercise and if you're trying to um work against two or three decades of constantly being made to think and feel a certain way then it's going to take some time to to pull that around um the the way that we approach that with hypnotherapy is just getting straight to the root of it and 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 changing changing the behavioral pattern and a lot of it's about changing your relationship to thoughts themselves um i'll i'll, I'll stop there because i could go on a tangent for ages but does, does that kind of start to answer the question yeah no i like that you actually also framed it in the, the amount of time we're working with something that was been a pattern enforced for decades and yeah. it's going to take a while so there's be kind with yourself is kind of a message i'm hearing too yeah yeah, there's pe people go one of two ways. Either they're like resigning to a fate of being stuck in these patterns for the rest of their lives. And it's like, this is a life sentence I have to live with. Or they go the other way and say, well, I know change is possible. So I'm 
like if I haven't done it all by tomorrow, then there's something wrong with me. And uh, n neither one of those is helpful. Um, I think t taking the approach of finding a way, having that perseverance, that um, you know, the, the grit and the willingness to to really pursue life as yourself and your ability to live as a honest and authentic expression of yourself, absolutely pursue that. And there will be more efficient routes to achieve it. Uh, but also having the patience to know that, uh, look, if it took you two or three decades to get to a place, it if it only takes you six months to get out of that place, then you, you, you're doing pretty well, you know? Yeah. One of the, so I, I started your course, your intro course that you mm. sent, and I loved it. And I thought you did an incredible job with like gently guiding with the, you have the calmest voice and um, gently guiding the person through a kind of a visual internal world, mm. almost like slowly entering a dreamlike state. Yeah. Um, and I, I feel like people would hear the word hypnotherapy or they'll read it in the subject and, and maybe dismiss it because they don't know what it is. Um, but maybe I can give a little bit more of like my personal experience, like having you imagine your own world um, in, in this like dreamlike state. And there's, there's a number of almost like metaphorical things like, okay, there's a staircase. Now you're walking down the stairs or there's a door. Imagine the door, open the door. And now you're in another world. Now imagine light coming into your body. And could you describe like that? That was like one of the, uh, maybe mixing up another, another um, type similar experience. And uh, that's like an untethering thing. So I don't want to confuse the audience with like your thing and that thing. I'm mixing them together, I think. But um, I did the, a number of them a couple of times. So that kind of practice, um, and you have really soothing music that goes with it. But like, could you describe maybe how those methods work and why they work? So your unconscious mind works in symbols and metaphors. It doesn't tend to speak to you in words. It, it works mm -hmm. in... Um, you know, a very artistic way, frankly. And uh, arguably, that's where artistic expression comes from. So that's just a fun side point. But the 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 real point of all of these exercises is, is helping you as the listener to build a stronger and more communicative relationship with your unconscious mind. A lot of people feel like they're their own worst enemy. They'll say that a lot. Um, the thing I said earlier about the internalized cult member or all, all of those internalized mechanisms, it can feel as if we're working against ourselves. And that adversarial frame is a uh, suboptimal to say the least. So the, the approach I like to take is, is helping the individual to actually get to know themselves. There's a lot about self love out there and how important it is. But if you, it's, it's harder to love something you don't know, I think. <clears throat> so the more you get to know yourself and get to know how you work and, uh, and you know, what's there and where it came from and just developing that working relationship with your own mind, it's, um, it becomes easier then to love yourself in the same way that you might meet someone who's a bit, uh, they have some trait that you don't like. And uh, at first they rub you up the wrong way. And then the more you get to know them, it's like, oh, actually, you're really kind in this context. <clears throat> You've been through these experiences in the past and that's what's made you a bit rough around the edges, but you know, you, you, your heart's in the right place and you always stand by your friends and you're really honest and honorable. Uh, th those types of things, the more you get to know someone, it's it doesn't delete the things that you might not like, but it adds a new context to them. And so a lot of how cults and manipulative groups work is by making you disown and uh, alienate from yourself. So actually coming home to yourself is an important step. And I was doing hypnotherapy for a few years already. Um, and the, the standard way of doing things is what I would describe as a taxi driver model. And what I mean by that is if but let's say you need to get from point A to point B. So you call a cab, taxi comes, takes you there. Jolly good, you've got where you needed to go. Problem is that if you need to get anywhere else, you need to call another cab. And so a lot of therapeutic resources and hypnotherapists and the standard way of doing it, in fact, is 
that. It's you, know, you come in with a problem, a phobia, a trigger, or some grievance, whatever it is, we fix it, and then you go along your merry way. The That didn't hit the spot for me because I thought, well, I don't want to to create a dependency situation. I want to actually help people and train people to become more independent and empowered within their own right. So the way I approach things and the reason those exercises are so uh, like simple and easy and that they kind of build on themselves in a, in a very logical way is that instead of the taxi driver model, I'm adopting a driving instructor model where the attitude is, well, rather than coming to me to retrain your brain, it's far better in the long run if I teach you how to operate your own brain. If I show you how to open up this interface with your own unconscious mind, if I share some specific frameworks and strategies you can use to um, to, to affect the changes you want, to be aware of problems before they manifest in external catastrophes and uh, to be able to solve them you know, while they're still small, it's, it's far better then to uh, be, because you have a skill set that you can take off into the world and you don't need to you know hop on a call to me or you know go back and listen through something to to cover a certain point because it's become an, an internalized part of your own um you know of your own mental and emotional immune system and right. the the fact is that everyone at all points throughout the day is programming themselves we're, we're all being influenced on some level all day, every day, by everything we consume, every ad- advert we see, every song we listen to, every TV show we watch. There are these studies in uh, the priming effect, it's called. And it's fascinating where people can, that they do these like word scramble experiments where a group of people will uh, have to unscramble words and all those words have something to do with anger and frustration. And another group will have to unscramble words all to do with calm and peaceful and positivity. And then they have to wait for a while to receive their results. The group that did this group of words, the frustration and anger ones, they were all more agitated by the wait than the the people who did words around peace and softness and all of that. That's just some words. That's a little word search exercise that's really unimportant. And, uh, and yet it can change our behavior in a really radical way. So all day, every day, what we're putting into our minds and our awareness is priming us. It's setting us up and uh, setting the tone mentally and emotionally. So when I'm introducing hypnotherapy to people, sometimes it can seem as if it's something really new and obscure and something they've never done before, where the fact is that you, you're programming your brain all day, every day anyway. You don't get to opt out of that. But what you do get to have control of is what are you priming yourself with? What are you putting in and and how are you uh, using that state of uh, mastery and authorship over yourself? Is it just to reinforce things other people have put there? Is it uh, reinforcing cruddy things other people said to you? Or is it uh, forging a new path? So it's, it's just using the control that you have and didn't realize that you had and uh, using it intentionally. So that's the approach I take with it. Could you give an example or or give an idea of a timeline of if you start this program to getting useful tools, like what's the, the onboard and then you understand something valuable. Like from your course, 15 minutes. Yeah, I don't know. I it sounds that, kind of cocky, but maybe maybe you can answer that question better than I can. But I'm I'm very much a no fluff kind of person. I like to because I've I've had enough fluff in my life. And the thing is, if you've spent time in an organization that they've robbed you of time, they yeah. stole it from you. And so I'm not in the business of stealing more time just to gratify something I want to draw attention to about myself. It's like, look, let's let's get to the point, shall we? We have work to do, we have problems to solve and things you want to experience and accomplish. So my my intent always is to at least try my best to get straight to something valuable 
or something yeah. insightful and, and to try and be very practical and like gi giving you something tangible that mm -hmm. that's beneficial in in the real world and in, in your real life so my intention like well within the first hour is is when there's something uh, beneficial or some insight is clicking into place the first thing we did i did it with this the same friend i was mentioning before her and i sat down and listened to the audio but before we put on the first um half hour session introductory session i think we did two it was like introductory and there's like the the go in um and I think I fell asleep. Almost fell. No, I almost fell asleep. She's like, "You're asleep." I'm like, "No, I'm in it. I'm like in mm -hmm. the world." <laughs> um, but there, we, we first wrote. We answered all your questions. There's like a downloadable PDF form with like, yeah. "Phil, what is this?" Is a big question about your life. What is a goal that you have? Kind of let's let's talk almost like a New Year's resolution checklist yeah. to go through. Um, that kind of depth of what do I want this year? What do I want in my life? that kind of thing where am i at how do i feel now kind of yeah. if i recall it's, it was like six months ago um when i started and yeah and then we just like okay now we're listening great we're like in a comfortable place we're almost like getting into like a standard stillness meditation comfortable spot i think i was sitting up we were sitting up for it i think that but i've also done it laying down yeah but there's a temptation to like knock out and fall asleep because you're sort of getting into a dreamlike state yeah or i was um but yeah, I think that's a like just answering the questions is like, okay, life assessment, where am I at right now? Take a little pulse on my psyche and my emotions. And then let's learn some skill set and tools. And we're gonna go inside, go internal. And I think I think because I've been doing more of this kind of thing in the last, like, especially well, I think I started like seven years ago, which sounds like a long time, but it's not like I do it all the time. And I did like a regular therapy, a regular meditation with an app with Sam Harris's app. And we've talked about that mm -hmm. before. Um, and that was really helpful because it's like, he's an atheist. There's no spirit world. Um, just like, here is what the ancients were doing. Uh, so I was, you know, dabbled in this, in this kind of thing over the years, but I feel like the last couple of years, especially this year, I've been realizing that I still have some pretty serious frameworks that are, that are patterns of mine. It's easy to see it in someone else, but like yeah. maybe you can't see it in yourself. And that's what I've experienced. Like, oh, this is actually like a big problem that I just keep on out reliving or I keep on, even we mentioned at the outset, like these frame, these kinds of relationships, I realize like I keep on bringing in some pretty controlling damaged people into my life. Like I see them across the room in a crowd and I'm like, that's the person I needed in my yeah. life. That's the most Imagine interesting person in the room. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm like, everyone else here is a normie and I don't care. They're going to, it's going to be a boring experience. Like I'm going to go straight for that other person. And then I'm fascinated, like, wow, riveted experience. Yes. And on some level, I I will probably always do that. But now I'm like, oh, some of those characteristics are red flags. And mm -hmm. I've realized like once a year or so for the, my whole adult life, I've invited someone into my life that has later turned into like a relatively like emotional nightmare situation. And I play as much of a part as they probably do, but I think I'm playing out some role of like some, some pattern that I just cannot see. Mm -hmm. And people are like, dude, that's a red flag. That's not just one red flag. There's like a beam of light shining at like yeah. their eight red flags. Why are you not seeing this? Why are you still hanging, doing but this? It's my favorite shade of red. It suits me so <laughs> nicely. <laughs> yeah. Compliments my hair. We're great together. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, that's the most exciting person in the room. Or in my life, but yeah, and then, and then it turns into some nightmare situation. Nightmare situation. I'm like, oh, I've been here before. This totally sucks. How did I not see this coming? And I'm like, and then my internal dialogue's like, totally saw that coming. Saw this coming. Yeah, D drew towards it anyways. Curiosity killed the cat or whatever. Um, and yeah, so like, I'm okay. What's this pattern, and where does it stem from? And I think I still have work to do. And I, and uh, one person here mentioned, and this like it's an anonymous person in the comments said. They left the Jehovah's Witnesses mentally and emotionally way before they physically stopped going because of family. Mm. So once I truly left, I was fully free. I still had some baggage, but it was way less than others than others that I know. I think I felt very similarly, and I still feel similarly. Yeah. I still have baggage, and it's less than other people that I know. Part of how I was able to make a movie. It's like, I can face the trauma because this trauma wasn't as heavy as it has been for others. Mm. I maybe have a little bit of a lighter experience. And maybe I've had a lighter experience my whole life. Um, but just to like comment on that, I think 
we're always going to be like unraveling the layers of the onion that this group has instilled in us. And this is a fascinating and powerful way to, to open up and, and maybe like accelerate the path. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, a, a huge factor in us making decisions that are in our own best interests and, or not making decisions that are objectively bad decisions is, uh, it boils down to our sense of deservedness, which was totally undermined by them, by necessity. Because if you keep people feeling small and suppressed and unworthy, then they'll they'll tend to just latch on to whatever um, half-hearted graciousness you extend to them. Mm. Whereas um, an actual empowered, worthy person with a healthy sense of self-esteem is, is harder to control. Happy people are hard to manipulate, full stop. So these uh, these patterns they put in place do that, and and there's a real mistake that so many people make. To to use that example of kind of uh, hellscape relationships, let's say, where where people um, might have a romantic relationship or a work relationship, whatever, and they think, well, I, I keep attracting all these narcissists. That's the buzzword. And uh, so I'm going to read all the books and take all these courses and I'm going to watch all these body language videos and I'm going to learn how to identify narcissists uh, so that I can see these red flags a mile off and then I'll be safe. And then lo and behold, they get into all the same situations. And uh, the fact is that they already saw the red flags. Mm. But on some level, they were the co-conspirators in their own demise because on, on some level, for some reason... Yeah, same, same. I've got no excuse. I'm an expert in this crap, and I've made ter ter terrible decisions in the past. And uh, it was until really focusing on this uh, th this sense of look, what, why don't we think we deserve better? Mm. Because you can get someone who has no training at all. They don't know anything about body language or red flags, this, that, and the other. And they're just um, they just seem to be impervious to these manipulative types that will just walk away from a dodgy situation. It's like, no, that's not for me. And, uh, and so the knowledge, the insight that we would think is the solution is, uh, is really just window dressing. It's fun. It's interesting. And it's, uh, you know, it gives you insights into human nature and psychology gives you insights into yourself. That's all great. Um, and I'm biased in saying that, but it's, I think it's great. But the, the the real difference is made not by getting a degree in human behavior. It's by raising your own standards of what you will accept from yourself and for yourself. And the, mm -hmm. the things that lowered those standards were childhood experiences, previous relationship experiences, cultural programming, and the the place where those programs and patterns are stored is in the subconscious mind, which is why... In the program, we focus very much on g going in there and removing the obstacles and just uh, clearing out the friction and the deadwood that mm. would otherwise have got in the way of you being able to actually say, no, I deserve better for myself and from myself. So we have nine minutes before we need to end. Can you tell people what we're offering or you're offering during the Kickstarter? Yeah. Yeah. Support the Kickstarter, everyone. It's really good and you should do it. And you should do it anyway because it's doing great work and it's going to help a lot of people. And it's a way to uh, so support an impact that's being made that's, that's really worthwhile. But if there is extra incentive that's needed, I, uh, I wanted to offer the, the, the foundational portion of my hypnotherapy program, which is, I think it's eight seven or eight hypnotherapy recordings. It's that coaching framework. It's also a sleep. Uh, it's like a going, going to sleep meditation and a starting the day right meditation. Like we, we spoke about priming earlier. It's just get, giving that, that base level skill set so that if you've had experiences with meditation or hypnotherapy in the past and it was like all right or it was ju just not quite what you expected it to be, it's giving you that driving instructor model where it's showing you how to actually interface with your own mind and how to get the uh, get get a deeper understanding of yourself. And the uh, 
morning and the nighttime recordings as well, if you want to use them. It helps you then to take control of how you're starting and finishing your day, which controls the way you sleep. It controls or determines, I should say, the emotional experience you'll have throughout the day. And uh, what I said earlier about getting back into the driving seat of your life, of kicking out the former masters and then giving yourself that sense of mastery over yourself, of, of accepting the uh, mantle of being the author of your own life. And um, that's not going to happen by accident. And so it, for everyone who supports the Kickstarter over the next uh, seven days, I believe, isn't it, Scott? Then that's right. I'm giving yeah, seven days. Yeah, I'm, I'm giving access to all of that uh, free of charge. So just reach out to me uh, by Facebook or email or Scott can uh, send a link and uh, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll hook you up. And the, the Kickstarter is going to do great. There are already so many people supporting it because it is such a good cause. And so anything that I can do here to, to sort of share this as an extra incentive, anything you can do to share this as well is... Um, you know, it's, it's, it's really going to do good. Yeah, uh, that's an interesting, uh, important point. Um, I r- thank you so much for making that offer. I think it's an incredible alignment of our two, <clears throat> excuse me, very different worlds, filmmaking, yeah. and hypnotherapy, coaching. And I feel like the, the you mentioned before that you're not, you don't want to be dependent upon for someone else's um, success, happiness, and control over their own life. And that's an amazing piece of it is it's like, no, you get the tools. Yeah. Every other therapy thing I've I've done, and I've had amazing therapists um, who mean well and they do incredible work, but it's a business, and I have to go back to them to like continue the process. I don't. I, they've given me some tools, but I feel like your 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 whole ethos is like here are the tools. Go teach. You only teach you them, and then you have them for the rest of your life, and that's yeah. that's powerful. Yeah, it's also, the, yeah. Give the whole give someone a fish versus teach them the fish and my, my approach is to, to kind of do both so you're hungry now here have a fish while i teach you to fish and it just makes the most sense to do it that way yeah i love it i think it's amazing and um if you if you support the kickstarter like john said he, we're in touch we're we're friends and it's we're across the ocean but we can easily communicate these days and reach out to him reach out to me we'll make sure you get the his course and the links you need to start the process of, of it's going to, you're going to be impressed and it's, it's a way to grow fast, accelerate the path to processing trauma, um, making a more interesting and uh, healthier, healthier adult life in create, create, create the future you're looking for um, by having ownership, self authorship. Is that the correct terminology? That's the terminology I like because the author yeah. gets to choose what happens to the character. So mm, beautiful. Okay, everybody, kickstarterwitnessunderground.com is where the the campaign is, and it will that website will always be there, be useful. And uh, yeah, thank you so much again, John, for being a part of it, offering something special to make make um, both of our worlds make sense and to help the community. Ultimately, like both of our paths have been about giving something or reaching back or laterally, however you want to say it, to to the greater community. And I think it's an amazing, an amazing. I'm so glad we met. Yeah. No, nice. thank you. And thank you for everything you're doing. Cool. All right, everybody. Uh, WitnessUnderground.com and we'll uh, check out Jonam's course. It is available now through the Kickstarter at any level. If, if you support at any single level, um, you can get the course. So reach out to us. I'll put uh, the email contact um, in the video description as well as the link to the campaign. Thanks again, Jonam. Cheers. Thanks, Scott. See ya. Bye.